vegan, and The Omnivore's Dilemma. I actually uh, stole that title, The Omnivore's Dilemma, from an author. His name is Michael Pollan, and he wrote a book, The Omnivore's Dilemma. And basically, uh, our dilemma is that we have so many choices. Um, you know, we have fast food, we have healthy foods. Um, we have learned through the generations what foods will and will not kill us, for example. So we've, you know, we're smart enough to have learned from that. But unlike most animals, we have a choice to make at least three times a day, every day of our lives, about what we're going to eat. And in nature, that's really not normal. Okay? So if you feel like it's overwhelming sometimes to make those choices, you're not the only one, and that's a normal feeling. All right? So I think if we can get past that feeling and know that it's normal and that it's okay, uh, it makes it a little bit easier. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about basic nutrition, just to kind of give everyone a quick overview. Uh, you know, there are people who spend, you know, four years in college learning strictly about nutrition to become dietitians, but I think the average person uh, probably just needs to know the basics. And, you know, a lot of this changes. <laughs> Every ten years you'll find out something is bad for you and something is good for you. Uh, but for the most part, you know, basic nutrition stays the same. Nutrition is the study of how food is used by the body. And nutrients are chemical compounds that are needed for survival. So uh, nutritionists, for example, uh, take a lot of courses in chemistry and science to find out how the body actually deals with the things that we're putting in it. Now, this was kind of shocking to me, and this is probably an old statistic, 25% of adults in America suffer from hypertension. Uh, hypertension is basically when you have too much salt in your body, okay? It is the silent killer, um, because it can happen so quickly. People have strokes, heart attacks, kidney failure, okay? We can prevent this, though, by watching our sodium intake. Uh, many years ago, I took the salt shaker off the table, oh. and uh, I tend to cook with salt. Okay, so salt does play an important role in cooking. Again, we're dealing with chemistry here. Uh, salt will help uh, flavor things. It will help bring out the sweetness of vegetables. It changes uh, the way meat cooks, for example. So cooking with salt is not necessarily a bad thing. But chefs will use kosher salt because it is lower in sodium than iodized salt. Now, you have to be careful about that, though, because we still need that iodine. Okay, so make sure that if you're going to switch strictly to kosher salt, that you find out what good sources of iodine are and make sure that you eat those foods as well. Okay, but it does have less sodium than iodized salt. And to do a taste test one day, do a little bit of iodized salt on your tongue, just the salt, just on the front of the tongue, and then do a little bit of kosher salt. And you can tell the difference. You can taste a big difference. Okay. Rarely do things get too salty with kosher salt compared to iodized salt. Uh, but that's, that's one good way to restrict your sodium intake is just to use a little bit of salt during the cooking process and leave it off the table. Okay? Also, you guys, more than one-third of adults in America suffer from obesity. 35.7%. It was 25% six years ago. So it's going up. It's not going down. We know it's an epidemic. Uh, obesity causes heart disease. It causes diabetes. And we're talking about type 2 diabetes here, okay? The one that you're not born with. High blood pressure and some types of cancer. This is generally caused from sedentary lifestyle and a high calorie, high fat, and high sugar diet. Now, what is the number one killer of Americans, do you think? Okay. Heart disease. It's kind of scary. And for women, it's very, very high. Okay. What's the good news? Heart disease is preventable and it's controllable. Okay. So it's something that we have control over. We don't have control over a lot of things in life. Okay. But our attitudes and our actions and heart disease are a couple of them. Okay. All right, now how are we going to do that? We're going to do it through diet. But what is a diet anyway? I mean, is it, 
something that's painful that you're like, oh my god, I have to go on this diet. It really shouldn't be. It should be that middle one there. The usual food and drink consumed by an organism. And that usual diet should be a healthy diet. That's your goal. Not to go on diets or always be on a diet. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, uh, some people have to go on diets or have restricted diets because of their health problems. Okay? Consult your health care professional for details about your mm -hmm. diet. Okay? All right, so part of your diet, you need, we have six major nutrient groups. This is a little bit different than like when you look at my plate and all that kind of stuff uh, coming from the USDA. You have proteins, you have carbohydrates, you have fat, vitamins, mineral, and water. Okay? Proteins is a food group. Carbohydrates is a food group. They actually kind of consider that the whole grains. That's really your breads and cereals and things like that. Uh, fat is a food group, and we'll, we'll talk about why we need fats here in just a minute. And then your vitamins and minerals come from your fruits, vegetables, your grains, your nuts and seeds. Okay? And obviously, we need water. So, protein. Uh, everybody needs protein. We, we probably all know that, right? We know we need meat. Now, there's more to protein than meat, though. Can you live without meat? Yes. Sure you can, but you need protein. So you have to find other sources of it. Peanut butter. Now, the reason peanut butter is an excellent source of protein, one of the reasons that we think we need meat is because meat has what they call a complete protein. And basically what that means is it has all the amino acids that the body needs. Okay, so without getting too technical, when you have a variety of foods in your diet, including grains, nuts, seeds, and vegetables, you will consume a complete protein, but you wouldn't necessarily do it all at once every meal. Mm -hmm. And that's the hardest part for vegans and vegetarians. Mm -hmm. So again, if you're going to cut meat out of your diet, you need to do some research and make sure that you're getting a good amount of complete proteins from different sources. Mm -hmm. okay? uh, proteins provide calories, but... Uh, they synthesize new body tissue during growth. So that's why, for example, when women are pregnant, they need higher levels of protein because there is new tissue being developed in the baby. Okay, so they need that protein to help make that happen. Uh, it replaces worn out cells, and Lord knows we all, we all have worn out cells, right? Uh, it forms hormones, enzymes, and antibodies, and these all affect the way you feel. Okay, and the way your body deals with life. All right, carbohydrates. This is like the evil nutrient, isn't it? Oh, I can't have carb. I'm on a low carb diet. I can't have bread. You know, and it's like, well, maybe if we got away from the white carbohydrates and moved towards the brown whole grain carbohydrates, we would be better off, and we wouldn't be so scared of carbs. Okay, uh, it is the most important nutrient source for the body. It has. You find carbohydrates in sugars, starches, and fiber. Which one is the best carbohydrate? Fiber. The fiber. That's right. And we'll, we'll get into a little bit more detail. Your sugars, you've got different types. What I really want you to notice here, um, your, your simple sugars are four calories per gram. Um, I believe that's the same as fat. You've got glucose here. Um, now that comes from grape sugar, honey. It's good for the brain. Okay, so you need that type of stuff. Notice that fructose is the sweetest sugar. So if anybody has that sweet tooth, and you're, but you're trying to cut out like the added sugar, go for the fruit. Okay, fructose has fr or is found in fruit. Okay, and honey's good for you to a certain extent, but it's still a sugar, so you have to be cautious of that. Now then you have your polysaccharide. Poly means more than one, right? Poly means two. Uh, or more. These are your complex sugars, those complex carbohydrates that everybody's always saying stay away from. Um, now you can find some good complex carbohydrates though. Your starches literally are the storage, the energy storage of the plant. Okay. Your good food sources are seeds, legumes. What are legumes? In layman's terms really. Beans. Beans, yeah. Beans and peas. Okay. Uh, nuts, grains, root vegetables. Uh, root vegetable would be carrot or parsnip. And a tuber 
would be a potato. Now fiber, notice zero calories per gram for your fiber. Okay. Satiety. Uh, when you eat brown rice versus white rice, you're going to feel fuller. And what's that going to do? That's going to keep you from eating less of the things that you don't need to be eating. Okay. A lot of times when people cut out uh, the, the red meats and, the, and the, the meat part, or they cut back on the meat part, uh, they might find themselves feeling more hungry. Like you're eating all this food, but you're not really getting full. Um, incorporating fiber into your diet, incorporating that brown rice, the brown pasta, the quinoa, all these different grains, will help with that because it'll really, it, it helps fill you up a little bit more. Okay? Uh, you, can eat you can eat vegetables and fruit all day long. Sometimes you just don't get that feeling of fullness, especially children. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, now listen, these, uh, this fiber is going to do more than just fill you up. It's going to help keep your intestinal tracts clean, which is very, very important. Uh, there are a lot of uh, problems with Americans. Um, and how about just, you know, the people that live in our own cities and towns, uh, the gastrointestinal problems are increasing. Um, Dr. B has joined me today uh, to sit in, and she joins me on uh, cooking demonstrations. She's a gastroenterologist and came to us because she's concerned for her patients. And she believes that what we're eating is a huge part of this. So if you will have some fiber, you will make Dr. B very happy. Yes. <laughs> but you will make your own body very happy too, and, and it's got to start sooner than later. You know, as we get older, it gets worse. Mm. So uh, all the cancer problems they might actually be solved with a little bit of fiber in the diet. Mm. Uh, soluble fiber helps lower cholesterol. Hmm, there's that heart disease coming mm. up again. There's a way to prevent that. Okay, food sources. It's pretty simple, folks. Whole grains, raw fruits, and vegetables. It really doesn't take a nutritionist or a dietitian or a scientist to figure out what to put on your plate. Okay? That can help, but you should be able to go to the grocery store, buy those whole grains, buy those fruits and vegetables. Okay? And if you need help cooking, you come see us over in culinary and we'll help you out. Okay? Be happy to. Alright, now that we have our fats, we have to have fats, right? Okay? We don't want very much of it, but we need it. They're, it's a very concentrated energy source. Uh, it provides more than twice as many calories as an equal amount of protein or carbohydrate. So you get a lot more calories from a little bit of fat. Okay. And that, that was especially important for people uh, when, during the winter time, you know, they couldn't get food from Mexico and Brazil and Chile during the off season. I mean, that's where all our food's coming from right now for the most part. Look at, look at the sign in the grocery store. It's, a lot of it's not coming from California right now, okay? They had to be able to consume foods during scarce times and survive, okay? So they would, they would preserve meats and they would probably have a higher fat diet than we could handle now, okay? All right. Um, now, at the bottom it says, remember, these percentages are based on a healthy intake of calories according to your gender, your activity level, age, height, etc. And the numbers were actually taken from the Centers for Disease Control website, which is a great resource. Uh, but basically, you want to limit your saturated fats, and that is always, animal fats always will contain saturated fat, okay? Uh, but you can, so cheese, butter, cream, meats, and then rarely is it really found in, in the fruit and vegetables, uh, but coconut and palm oil carry it. But if you'll, mm -hmm. if you, um, if you move to coconut oil, it's very high in saturated fat, but it's also known to be very good for you. There are at least eight or nine very beneficial attributes of coconut milk. Uh, coconut butter, excuse me. Coconut oil. <laughs> Alright, and then limit your polyunsaturated and your monounsaturated fats to about 18 to 28 percent of your daily calories. Olive oil is very good for you, we know that. Okay, that's been proven, Mediterranean diet. Uh, is one of the best diets out there. They're finally coming out with some really great research on that. Um, nuts, seeds, fish, um, vegetables, you know, vegetable oils. Okay. Again, what are we looking at here? We're looking at whole grains, nuts, seeds, fruits, and vegetables. Pretty simple, right? Okay. And y'all, when I say nuts, I don't mean like, you know, the peanuts that have 
been roasted with a ton of salt. <laughs> All right, you have to watch that type of stuff because it's out there. And you really have to read the ingredient label for that. Okay, who knows what a trans fatty acid is? Margarine. Okay. Trans fatty acids are not normally found in nature. They're found in a few places, very small amounts. And that is, uh, that's been the big you know, deal about fast food and the hydrogenated fats. And hydrogenated fats are just basically liquid fats that have been chemically changed so that they are solid. Okay? Uh, so it takes it from being a polyunsaturated or a monounsaturated fat and turns it into a saturated fat. And which one don't we want to eat a lot of? Saturated, saturated fat. fat. Now we do need some. A little yeah. bit's good. Okay? Um, so you want to, at the bottom, stay away from, and look, y'all, I grew up with Crisco. I mean, there was a can of Crisco in the kitchen. We fried our green beans in it. We fried our chicken in it. Uh, you know, it was originally... Um, it was originally produced to make candles with. And then we, somehow we turned it into a food, so go figure. Uh, margarine. Now, there's a lot of people still out there trying to preach about how margarine, use margarine instead of butter. I will absolutely disagree with that. I think we need to get with the times and, and let's get rid of that margarine. If you want to do something to lower your saturated fat, you can use olive oil. Get rid of the margarine. If olive oil is a little expensive, you know, I do half olive oil and half butter at home. So it has a little flavor, it has a little bit of saturated fat, it's a little bit less expensive than using just straight olive oil. Okay. Uh, even Brummel and Brown, it's a yogurt base, but it also has that hydrogenated fat in it. Uh, and many, 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 most of your processed foods are going to have that hydrogenated fat. All you have to look for is that word hydrogenated soy or hydrogenated canola. Mm -hmm. you got to look at the ingredient list for that. But it's listed as a saturated fat, and some labels have trans fatty, tra uh, trans fat is how they're listed now. Okay. Vitamins, I love vitamins. Vitamins make me feel good. I can tell when I don't get enough vitamins. <laughs> and I'm not talking about the pill. <laughs> okay. Chemical compounds that are involved in a, a various metabolic reactions in the body, whatever that means. All I know is it makes me feel good. Okay. Fat-soluble, vitamins A, D, E, and K. That's why we need the fat in our diet, so that we can, our bodies can absorb those vitamins. Okay. And then water-soluble, for example, are vitamins B and C. So we also need to drink lots of water, don't we? Okay. Then there are minerals. These are crystalline chemical elements that comprise about 4% of a person's weight. Several years ago, um, I sat down and I wrote out all these lists of things that I should be eating, just to see, you know, just to see where I was. And what I realized, it was minerals that I was missing the most out of my diet. And that's when I started switching to the whole grains and the nuts and the seeds, okay, to get those minerals. Okay. There are 22... Uh, I believe it's vitamins and minerals that our body needs to function normally. And that's what we know of, 22. So I expect everybody to make a list of all these vitamins and keep up with it every single day. <laughs> Not very practical, is it? No. So I'm going to refer back to the simple rule of nuts, seeds, beans, grains, vegetables, and fruits. That's an easier list, isn't it? And then limit your, limit your meat proteins. And hey, it's easier on Water is the most vital nutrient. Got to have that water. How many glasses a day? A. Okay. Well, on this uh, nutrition label, I, I forget sometimes because I went to culinary school, they taught us how to do these things. And sometimes I forget that it's the simple things that, that people aren't taught and don't really know what to look for. Um, so this is a real quick guide to your percentage of daily value. Okay. Now notice this is a sample label for macaroni and cheese. Um, you start at the top. You always want to look at the serving size. So the serving size for this is one cup of, of cooked macaroni and cheese. There are two servings per container. Okay. So if you eat the whole box, <laughs> you just ate two servings, not one. Okay. Um, 250 calories.
calories per serving. And if you'll notice, it's 110 calories from fat. That's almost half of the calories are coming from fat. Now, right off the bat, does that sound like it's good for you? No. No. Because you're not supposed to have that much fat, are you? No. 25 to 35% of your fat is, is supposed to be from your calories per day. Okay, and we're at almost 50% with one meal. And that's if you only have a cup. <laughs> All right. The, the, the um, nutrients that are in yellow, you want to limit those. So there's your total fat. It will show 12 grams. And then they only are required to show the saturated fat, and sometimes they'll show the trans fats. Sometimes you'll see mono, mono and polyunsaturated, but most of the time you won't. So we, just, so we don't know how to discern between the two at this time. Okay? And these are all, this is all law. People have to label foods this way. Okay? Uh, and there's a slew of uh, products out there. If you look at the USDA food recalls, there's a slew of products that get pulled from the shelves because not labeled properly. That, that's the number one recall, you know, is, is from this label. Notice the sodium. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and 470 milligrams sounds like a lot anyway, but then when you look that it's 20% of what you're supposed to get all day, that doesn't leave much room for salt on my popcorn, does it? Nope. All right, total carbohydrates, 31 grams. That's not too bad, except look, None of it has, none of it's fiber, which is the carbohydrates that I need. And then I got five grams of sugar there. Okay, and that sugar is just going to turn to fat, basically, in my body. Okay, if I'm not feeding it properly. Very little vitamin A. That's probably from the milk. You know, any kind of milk product that's in there. The vitamin C, very little of that. The calcium is probably all from the milk. Okay. And very, a little bit of iron. But overall, it really isn't that healthy, is it? Now, if you're using a, uh, a strong cheese, like a, a sharp cheddar cheese, for example, uh, you don't have to use as much of it. And then let's say you made it with a whole grain pasta. Now you have a healthy dish, and pasta and cheese give you a complete protein. But you have to do it right. Mm. Okay, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. Any questions about the label? Now, I look at this, I spend a few seconds on this. The biggest thing I look at is the ingredient list. Okay? And I'm looking for the least amount of ingredients, right? I mean, I pretty much know that it doesn't take 20 ingredients to make bread. It takes about four or five. So when there's tons of ingredients listed there and you can't even name half of it, it's probably not good for you. Uh, salsa, for example, there's a salsa I eat, and it's tomatoes, onions, bell pepper, uh, dried cilantro, lime juice, and then salt's the last ingredient. That's all it is. I can, I can deal with that. I can dig. You know, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. That's about what I would do if I were at home. Mm -hmm. Okay, tips for cooking and eating healthy. Uh, it's hard to teach y'all how to cook healthy in an hour because that really requires me teaching you how to cook and that's hard to do in just one hour. Um, I hope that some of you are fortunate enough to have learned from your grandparents or your parents. If you are grandparents or parents, I would urge you to, you know, use computer resources and books and, uh, you know, the culinary department or your, your nutrition department over here at this campus uh, to start cooking again. We've kind of lost it. Um, and if we don't teach the next generation to cook, uh, who will? It's not taught. <laughs> it's, it's, it's taught in home. Uh, and it's not taught in restaurants. And it's not taught um, on Facebook. Um, and it's not taught. Well, it is taught on cable, but that's Food Network, and that's not real. <laughs> so <laughs> I would encourage all of you to get back in the kitchen and talk about life in the kitchen, and you know, kind of use that time as fellowship for the family. Um, and it will, you will feel better, uh, not only because you're, you're spending time uh, with your family, but because you're eating well. Okay? And, and, and stay away from the hamburger helper and all that. Get back to the raw basics. And don't be afraid to mess up. Just keep like, you know, something uh, like a can of tuna and some whole grain oat nut bread or something.
just in case the meal doesn't go quite as planned. So you have something you can eat for dinner. But don't be afraid to mess up. I, I still want to food too. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Avoid overcooking foods. And so, I mean, think about it. A dark green, army green broccoli that's mushy and overcooked. All right. Use cooking methods low in fat. Now, chefs talk in, in these terms, right? So these are methods. There's a whole procedure for each of these methods. Okay, so steaming, uh, stir frying, it's a very quick method, you know, in the pan, just like saute is. Mm -hmm. Grilling, although we want to be careful about how much we grill foods because of what? Like what? You cook the carbon. Yeah, yeah, the carbons are carcinogenic. So we want to be careful, we don't want to eat too many grilled mm -hmm. foods. Uh, but traditionally, they're considered yeah. healthy because they're low fat. And that's, that's with anything, you know, any kind of fire, you're, you know, there's fire on the, on the food, and so it's going to leave traces of carcinogenics. So as long as we don't overdo it, we're probably okay. So roasting, you know, that's basically like baking. Uh, poaching, which we don't do a whole lot of, but that's just cooking something in a liquid at a low temperature. Um, and simmering, okay? Now you want to keep food wrapped, and you want to keep food cool. Uh, vitamins are depleted when they're exposed to um, oxygen and light and heat. Okay? And that's why we also want to store foods in dark or opaque containers. I didn't know that. Um, you want to cut food into medium-sized pieces. That will decrease the cooking time. Okay? Unless you're going to cook it in the oven for a really long time, and then you want it in bigger chunks. But basically, basically they say that. I don't necessarily agree with that, but they'll tell you that like on the websites and stuff you look at because um, uh, you have less chance, I guess, of overcooking it, is what they think. Avoid holding food at hot temperatures for prolonged periods of time. Again, the vitamins and even the minerals will start to deplete. Limit your intake of junk food and alcohol. If you get cravings for uh, salty, for example, I don't know, try a Triscuit with a big fat slice of cucumber and a slice of fresh tomato with a little bit of feta cheese or queso blanco. And you can find all that at your local grocery store. That'll give you a crunchy, it'll give you a fresh, it'll give you a little bit of acidity, a little creaminess from the cheese, and you can have like four or five of them and it'll get you through another couple of hours. Okay. Um, drink lots of water. And most importantly, just you can try to limit high fat, high sugar, high salty foods. And so that means no McDonald's or Taco Bell. <laughs> Hopefully I don't get in trouble <laughs> for saying that. <laughs> okay, so this, okay, who remembers the food pyramid? And we've, we had different versions for years, right? right? And then they just recently, the USDA, this is the United States Department of Agriculture, uh, just recently switched to uh, my plate. Harvard Medicine School, uh, if you'll see down here on the bottom right hand side, you can visit their website. They've got a lot of great information. This kind of looks like my plate, but you'll notice a few differences. Okay, For example, the healthy oils. We need fat in our diet, and my plate does not show that. Mm. Why? Probably because we get so much of it anyway. But we need to understand, we need to be smart, mm -hmm. you know, we're not, we're not, we need to be educated, uh, not, not dumbed down, is what I believe. So mm -hmm. you need to understand why you need that fat, and why do we need the fat? Because the body needs it. The body needs it so that it can help absorb well, the vitamins, yeah. okay? Yeah. Uh, and also it's good for your brain. No, really. Use healthy oils like olive and canola oil for cooking on salads and at the table. Limit butter. Okay, and avoid trans fats. So those trans fats were the margarine, the Crisco, stuff like that. Vegetables. Look how many vegetables we get to eat. Mm -hmm. The more veggies and the greater the variety, the better. Potatoes and french fries do not count. Mm -hmm. Although I will say, sweet potatoes are very good for you. Okay? And if you're going to eat potatoes, keep the skin on. Okay? Eat plenty of fruits of all colors. Now, instead of having a glass of milk, they have a glass of water. So, if you're going to, you know, when you drink, when you sit down and drink, drink water, tea, or coffee with little to no sugar. 
one to two servings a day of milk or dairy. There are a lot of people out there who are either allergic to dairy or are intolerant to it. So if that's the case, basically, you need to look for your vitamin D and your calcium and other sources. Uh, leafy greens, kale, for example, is a really great source of so make sure you avoid those sugary drinks. That's our that's one of our biggest mm, that's a huge problem right now for Americans and kids even, you know. Uh, and and remember that uh, fruit juices have a lot of sugar in them and a lot of them have added sugar, which means it's not just the natural fruit sugar. Okay, so we've got to be careful for that too. Um, eat whole grains like brown rice, whole wheat bread. Limit refined grains like white rice and white bread. I love steamed white rice, but I know the brown rice is better for me, so I say the white rice for special occasions. All right, for a healthy protein, I like it too. It calls it a protein, and I think I don't know what the other one says, but you know you can get healthy proteins from more than just meats. You can choose fish, poultry, beans, and nuts. You want to limit your red meat because it's high in cholesterol. Okay. Avoid bacon and cold cuts and other processed meats. They're usually high in salt. A lot of times they're high in fat. And they're also high in sodium nitrates and nitrites. Okay. Chem they're chemicals, basically. Okay. So you can have some, but you know, eating, eating a ham sandwiches for lunch every day may not be great. And then, of course, they have our little guy down here staying active. Okay, I'm not going to... Um, name all of these, but I put together a list of some different things, um, and make variety your keyword. Um, the more variety you have in your diet, uh, the more likely it is that you're going to get a well-rounded diet. You want color on your plate. Um, there may be some things in here you've never heard of. Most of them most of them, not all of them, you could probably find in grocery stores in the Little Rock area. Okay. Uh, there are Asian markets. Um, there are um, farmers, market. farmers markets. Um, Mexican markets. You know, there are all kinds of foods to draw from. from. Again, the omnivore's dilemma is that mm -hmm. you know we have so we have sometimes we have too many choices. But I know I get to kind of tired of the same old I do too. green beans and broccoli every week, you know. So I have to look too. outward. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then just apply those different cooking methods. The internet is a great resource for recipes. That's what, I, that's what we do, you know, we pick up books. If we can't find it in a book, we'll, we'll go online and, and <coughs> get ideas from there. Yeah. And again, don't be afraid to try it and not like it or try it and, you know, not do so well and do it again. <laughs> Legumes. Okay, this is just a. These are. This is just what I pulled off the top of my head for beans. Mung um, beans have become a favorite of mine, and when they cook, they remind me of purple hull peas. Ooh, so yeah, like, uh, and they are really high in protein. I don't know why they just do. <laughs> I don't know if you agree, Dr. B. Yes. And um, Dr. B uh, showed us how to um, uh, let them sprout to get sprouts from them. So if you do it, you got to be careful with sanitation and all that. But um, You know, the sprouts are going to not be on menus much longer because of commercial problems with sprouting and contamination. <coughs> so I think it's really good to learn how to make your own sprouts. You can sprout almost any one of these. Yeah. And sprouting increases the nutritional value several fold. Mm -hmm. Because the seed thinks it's going to germinate and become, mm -hmm. hey, I'm going to become a plant. Mm -hmm. So let me just get all my machinery going, all the, all the cellular and enzymes and all the stuff start, mm -hmm. you know, start to build a new plant. Mm -hmm. So then you eat it, and that's good for you. Mm -hmm. You don't need any equipment. No, mm -hmm. just no. water. Just no. water and drain it and cover it, and next morning you've got a sprout. Mm -hmm. wow. It's very satisfying. You feel like you're a part of that cycle, you know? <laughs> fruits, lots of fruits out there. And I'll admit, I'm not a big raw fruit fan. Uh, Dr. B 
talks about this raw diet, and I, I just can't get past the raw fruit thing. I I'm just, not into it at all. I know about it. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. If I'm well, fruit but fruit at least good. you should have at least 25, 30, 50 percent of your diet, maybe possibly could be raw, which is salads and fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and I like smoothies. You know, I do like you know fruit like that, but I like cooked fruit. Not necessarily with sugar added, but I, I like it cooked. I don't know why. I know that um, fruits and vegetables generally will lose about 50% of their nutrients within 72 hours of being picked. I believe it. Mm. So sometimes, fresh, uh, excuse me, frozen fruit, uh, excuse me, well, yeah, frozen fruits and vegetables might contain more nutrients because they're picked and frozen right away than fruit mm. uh, and vegetables that have been sitting for who knows how long. However long it took them to pick it in California or Mexico and ship it to the store exactly. and then distribute it from there and take it to the grocery store. And then you got to go to the grocery store and then you get it home. And then it's another week before you get to mm -hmm. around to cooking it. So flavor, nutrients, it's all much better fresh, which is why we should all be supporting our local farmers. Nuts and seeds, lots of nuts and seeds out there too. Mm -hmm. uh, they're kind of expensive like mm -hmm. to yes. buy. Um, I have noticed that they're becoming a little bit less expensive. They're typically less expensive too if you can buy them in bulk, unsalted, unroasted. If you buy them in the shell, they're even less expensive. But how much time do you have? You know. Um, so even Whole Foods, which is sometimes a little bit expensive. Um, well, the one thing that you can find there that's less expensive than a lot of the grocery stores are the nuts and seeds and the grains in their bulk section. Seaweeds. Now, they're kind of hard to find, but <coughs> the Asian markets will have different types of seaweed. So if you're, if you're feeling adventurous, and there are different kinds. There's dried seaweed, there's seaweed that you can get cold. Uh, I'm not a seaweed expert, uh, but you get uh, great protein if you're vegetarian. It's a great, great uh, thing to have. I believe a lot of them have are high in omega-3 fatty acids. Omega this is how the fish, actually you're supposed to eat fish to get omega-3s. Mm -hmm. But people like me, if I don't eat fish, <coughs> I can get my omega-3s from where the fish get their omega-3s. Mushrooms. I love mushrooms. You know, in that book I was telling you about, uh, Michael Pollan talked <coughs> about how most of the foods we eat come from the sun. Okay, even, I mean, the seaweed, the you know, <coughs> cattle, chickens, all of it, it all really comes from the sun, the energy comes from the sun. Mushrooms are one of the few things where the energy actually comes from the moon. Wow. Because they grow and they, they feed off of the moonlight. Wow. The sun. I didn't know that. Which is just kind of interesting. <laughs> yes. You know, th there's really not a whole lot of research still out there, you guys, on, on food and nutrients. Okay, so who knows what there is to that. Uh, and there are all kinds of different mushrooms. So even though you may not like a cremini or a portobello or a white mushroom, because of the texture, there are firmer mushrooms out there. The, the cremini mushrooms, they actually call those in the store now. They sell them as uh, baby portobello mushrooms. Oh, yeah. So the baby portobellos are also called cremini mushrooms. And the shiitake mushrooms are really fragrant. Uh, truffles are very fragrant, too, but those are the, those are the ones from uh, Italy that cost tons of money. We have cereals and grains. So, I mean, you guys, there's like tons of choices out there. This is cereals <laughs> and grains because some of these, we use them both for both. Okay. Like quinoa, for example, it used to be uh, eaten as a cereal. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the couscous typically is, it's a couscous is actually a pasta. It's a little bitty, little bitty ball. You know, it's a little bitty round. Pasta. It's an easy thing for dorms and places where you don't have places to cook. You can just, if okay. you can just boil water, you can eat it. <laughs> and again, any of these that you find brown are going to be better. I guess this is my, this is my sinfulness. Uh, but I have a family and we have a lot going on, you know, and I have a full-time job. And you know, rather than trying to fight it, um, I buy brown minute rice. So do you lose some of the nutrients? I'm sure you do. You know, but it's it's better than mm -hmm. trying to 
type of virus and not from any fiber. Please keep in mind with the pastas too. We're looking for the whole wheat, whole grain pastas. But those white pastas aren't nearly as good. For me. And I love the angel hair. Because they're, you know, they're gonna be mung bean noodles are good. But remember we were talking about mung beans That's earlier, then you can make noodles out of them. Soba noodles down here at the bottom there. Uh, those are made with buckwheat, so that's a nap. Buckwheat is just a, it's just a, a, a grain, you know, and they mill it and make a pasta out of it, so that's really good for it. It's a, it's like, it's, a, it's black, so that's kind of fun. It's like a, it's not like super, super black, but it's, it's real close. So I'll mix that a lot of times with, for kids. I'll mix soba and, and angel hair pasta with stir fry. Just to kind of get them used to that pasta. Mm -hmm. Herbs and spices, flavor, you guys. You know what? You can cook quinoa and you can cook barley and all that mess. And it, it's not going to be very good if you don't add some flavor to it. Yeah, I okay? Quinoa, it. just like some water with the quinoa, terrible. <laughs> you know, a little onion, a little bay leaf, a little bit, again, a little bit of salt and pepper. I'll say that with almost everything. And then these spices, and again, you guys, don't go for those little bitty fancy jars. You know, they're going to be expensive. Mm -hmm. Go to these Asian markets and the Mexican markets, and they'll have bags of spices. You know, they're really cheap. Mm -hmm. okay. Anytime you can buy this stuff in bulk, you're going you're gonna to find it at a better price. Vanilla is a great flavoring, by the way, for fruits and even savory dishes, but yogurt, if you buy just plain yogurt and then add your own vanilla and add a little bit of honey, you, you can control the amount of sugar that's in it. Because yogurt is healthy, but there's a lot of sugar in it. And there's a lot of stuff on here. It's just hard to find here, you know. And if you do find it here, it's expensive. That's a dog fish, right? But there, there's a lot. There's a lot. I mean, there's so much goodness out there. It's just like a dog. And that should be John Dory. That's the one. And of course, you know, there's lots of meats out there. Beef, veal, pork, lamb, venison. Venison is deer. Rabbit, you know, rabbit's like making a comeback. Yeah, I like that. We'll call them offals, or if you're my friend Suzanne from England, offals. Heart, liver, tongue. Sweet breads are the thyroid gland. They're surprisingly really good. They have to be cooked properly, though. If they're overcooked, they're not good. Kidneys. Tripe. Tripe is really cheap. I turkey, goose. Chicken, hen. Be careful, y'all, with meats. I guess my message to you with meat is um, if it has an ingredient label, don't buy it. <laughs> My chicken should just be a chicken. Yeah. It shouldn't have an ingredient label. Okay. Uh, my name is Chef Cynthia Malik. I'm a, an instructor for culinary arts. And uh, again, I want to thank you for joining us.